fracking has not only been this environmental um, injustice, but it also includes these kind of procedural injustices. Um, and this is all happening against the backdrop of um, we've got Brexit, we've got the rise of right, right wing um, populisms, we've got, this is an implicit climate denialism. So with political geology, I'm really interested in engaging with the kind of materialities and the extractive context, getting involved in um, uh, local actions, joining, so this is like the high courts of justice, joining the court cases, um, organising monitoring at the site as well. So I've been spending these lockdown months kind of looking at the the evidence trails um, particularly that the campaigners are using how are they bringing in policy how are they bringing in scientific expertise um, to kind of do a little style science and action research project yeah so also thinking of of doing science differently doing it with with hands hearts and heads um, treading carefully with communities and, and lightly on the earth uh, looking also for ways to cultivate more um, reciprocal relationships and practices. My research project is the politics of care and well-being in community economies, focusing on women's local business in rural Japan, where our population has been aging and depopulating since already. Nine. However, challenges of being women still remain in terms of double work at the business and the housework and caring for family members is still gendered practices. What feminist political ecology can inform here is the process that the historical trajectory of women's local business shows. It will tell us that evolving humans and non-humans interdependency and the political arrangement for challenges and needs to achieve their well-being. By examining care, caring processes embodied in the women's practices, it will reveal linkages with other species. My research location is in around Laung River in Central Kalimantan. During the first world, I attracted by the specific arguments of different ethnic identity. Um, the ethnic, uh, actually, the the Murong ethnic identity is basically shaped and situated by relation with the river and the relation with the river configure um, ethnic identity. And my question is how the extractive project influence the ethnic identity. You can see here uh, how uh, people um, use the ethnic identity to resist, uh, for example, protests, uh, roadblock, reclaiming the land, ask for highest compensation so the company cannot afford, uh, protest uh, for the um, water contamination. My research is about population, about population debates and the emotions and conflicts that reside within them. In my preliminary research, I have observed a number and a wide array of strong emotions being expressed when discussing uh, population sizes. And these feelings were surprisingly consistent across groups with similar academic backgrounds. And that is ultimately what led me to become interested in the sociology of emotions and the role of emotions and communication in scholars' engagement in population debates. One of the methods, which includes something called dialogic introspection, functions in a way as a place where mutual learning and shared exploration takes place between myself as a researcher and the participants reflecting on their own experience. Uh, there's the FPE understandings of emotion. I think particularly important is for Hannah Sultana, who pointed out that scholarship in emotional geographies has argued that um, emotions, rather than individualized human subjectivities, are in fact relational and fluid. Emotions are produced between people and places. They are embodied experiences to which sites and contexts matter. And I use this in my work. And perhaps when exploring the very divergent views in population debates, it is possible not only to stay with the trouble, but to love the trouble by paying the conflicts themselves, the mindful research attention, their emotional force warrants. 
IBTs are uh, the transfer of water from one basin to another, uh, to another distinct basin uh, or river catchment, and it's generally a uh, assemblage of infrastructure and technology that involves dams, pipes, canals, etc. To so transfer transfer water from uh, areas or river basins where it's considered surplus to uh, river basins where it's considered scarce or in deficit. All of uh, IBTs in the past or in the current, uh, in the sense that. This is a figure of um, uh, graphical as well as political administrative boundaries. They increase the complexity by bringing together new actors and different scales of government in oftentimes untested allocation and management procedures. Similarly, river basins and, pol and political administrative boundaries rarely overlap. This compounds distributions of authority and institutional fragmentation across domains and units. Finally, uh, while Integrated, integrated water resource management and uh, hydrosocial hydro territories also go beyond binary dualisms as explored, by, as explored by social natures in political ecology and nature cultures in feminist political ecology. Breaking down these dualisms also requires acknowledging the social nature of materials like water and how water meanings emerge from hydrosocial relationships. Intersectional approaches highlight how different meanings emerge from different groups in particular and the uses they have or wish to have for said water. This can open the link, uh, the possibility of linking social environmental contestations and embodied experiences of water that generate different meanings and mobilizations around allocation, water rights, and non-human justice. This brings me to uh, where, I, where I situate my current research goals. I bring two uh, different approaches. At the, at the macro level, I aim, I aim to map the intersection of technology as seen through IBTs, water governance, and environmental justice as seen in, in, in contestations. This would be explored through a systematic review of the scientific literature. At the, micro at the micro level, I aim to explore the entanglements of social, cultural, economic, and environmental factors influencing socially differentiated water access and governance, and how these relate to subjective political mobilization that reacts to, contests, and influences eco-social processes. And this would occur through field work and ethnographic field work in the Tajo Segura water transfer that I showed you in the previous photos. I hope that both aspects will be able to inform debates in environmental justice 